cry, my joy. It is one of the true thrills and privileges of my life to stand on this stage and induct to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. tell you this every year it's you know one of our favorite days <laughs> of our favorite mornings you know we're, we we go back to being giddy school children uh this first week uh, it's right it, it's the rock and roll hall of fame holiday <laughs> exactly exactly and you look rested jason is it you know how do you do it i would be a mess i went to bed early last night i knew today was gonna be a long day i was excited but i i had known all the uh inductees were getting announced today and uh I just uh, went to bed and relaxed and got up early this morning, ready to rock and roll. Well, you know, great pun there, uh, Jason. And thank you for joining us, obviously, Vice President of Education, Visitor Engagement at the Rock Hall, a uh, friend of ours. You know, you're coming to Nashville a lot. We love it. But uh, let's get on in with fact, it, Jason. Jamie, I'll so, say last time I saw yeah. you, we were backstage at the uh, Rock the Ramen event at the Ramen Auditorium, which was great. That's great right. And you, and, you, and you did a fantastic job. Jason, by the way, we've, we've talked about this, you know, congratulations, people were raving about it and the beginning of a, of a fruitful thing, I'm sure. Yes, I hope so. We hope to be back at the Ryman again in the future. All right, Jason. So the eighth annual Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, uh, you know, the inductees are out. The, the, the announcement of the, of the inductees are out. It's going to take place November 3rd in Brooklyn uh, this year in New York. Right. So the performer category, Kate Bush, Sheryl Crow, Missy Elliott, George Michael, Willie Nelson, Rage Against the Machine, The Spinners, Musical Influence Award. We got DJ Cool Herc, uh, Link Ray, and then the Music Excellence Award, Shaka Khan, Al Cooper, Bernie Taupin, and last but not least, uh, the Ahmed Erdogan Award for Don Cornelius. So, Jason, first of all, um, wow, Kate Bush got in. Yes. Thanks. The heavens, you know? <laughs> Like, what can you tell us about that? I think that it's become obvious, um, maybe with Stranger Things and, yeah. and with some other things that like her influence is just so far and wide, right? Yeah, I think this is a great example. And you and I've talked about this in the past where sometimes uh, an artist is so innovative, so influential, but they are not a household name the way some other artists are. And they kind of ride underneath the radar. Kate Bush is one of those people. I mean, for those of us like me who have listened to her forever, um, she's so amazing. She really pushed the boundaries of not just musical composition, but theatrical performance and the way she presented it. Music video, she was an early innovator of. Uh, but not a lot of people knew it. She was sort of, especially here in the United States, she was seen as more of an alternative, kind of new wave artist. Once she got that song, Running Up That Hill, on Stranger Things, <clears throat> everybody sort of re rediscovered her. And right. she had been nominated before. But this was her year. I, I had a feeling that if there was going to be a time when Kate was going to finally rally enough votes, this was going to be her year. And it was yeah. exciting to see it happen. Super exciting. And also, you know, we talk a lot here about, you know, when people kind of like, uh, you know, maybe they're nominated and they don't get in and they don't yeah. get in. And I think Kate Bush is one of those examples that, you know, eventually, you know, with the right body of work, the rock hole gets, you know, it, it, hap it happens. Yeah, it's a good example. And I often say this to people. There's some level of being patient if your favorite uh, nominee did not get in or if your favorite artist hasn't been nominated yet. It is a process and, you know, we only select so many each year. And uh, Kate Bush, you know, it was just a matter of time, but it's great to see the incredible work she's done now be honored here at The Rock. Absolutely, Jason. I mean, we have to select a few to talk with you only, but I think the stunner, the shocker to me, and I think that this is going to be one of the headliners, is Missy Elliott. 
Yeah. Wow. Wow. I mean, and in, and in the best way, I think this just jumps right out to you, Jason. I yeah. mean, she forged, she was such a pioneer. I must have been like 13 when, or 14 when, when in the early 2000s, when, when she was the first one to kind of empower women's bodies that like people oh, like Lizzo now do or something. But man, what a pioneer and, and first time nominee. What a surprise. She is uh, sort of setting a lot of Rock and Roll Hall of Fame records here, right? First time nominee, which is great because, you know, that she was only just eligible this year and got in. She's the first woman inducted in the uh, style of hip hop into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. All of our previous hip hop inductees were men. Um, she is somebody who is not just an artist, but a business personality. She thinks about her music and the enterprise of, of the music that she does. Uh, she represents a different sound for hip hop than we've had other previous inductees. And as you said, she was really an incredible role model in sort of the empowerment of women in hip hop, taking from people who came before her, like Queen Latifah, who I hope one day gets inducted to. Uh, but That's Missy right. Elliott set the stage, particularly if you say, like, you look at Lizzo or somebody, right? <laughs> yeah, that you can see that direct line in the sort of influence she had. And she continues to be a fantastic performer. That's the great thing about rock and roll, we, we're not inducting artists from a million years ago. Missy Elliott's still out there making great music right now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, Jason. I mean, so happy to see Missy Elliott there. Uh, let's talk about one big name, Willie Nelson. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I think the angle that, because we could spend an entire hour talking about Willie. but the thing <laughs> Maybe he, an entire week. <laughs> yeah, right. but I think the, ang the angle that I really love with Willie, uh, Jason, uh, is, you know, he confounded stuff like Farm Aid, which yeah. no one had ever thought about before, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, assisting family farmers. Uh, and of course, he supports uh, marijuana legislation and, and, and he advocates for numerous causes like animal welfare. Yeah. I mean, and, and he's done this forever. It's like he's been ahead of this giving curve for like, you know, 30 years. Yeah, years. It's, it's really interesting. You know, I, when we first announced Willie as a nominee, of course, you know Willie Nelson. I mean, you think everybody kind of knows Willie Nelson, but I went really and dug back into his history, into his music, and he just has such an incredible career. You know, if you think about from being a songwriter in Nashville in the early days, the founding outlaw country, uh, and sort of being this outsider, being known for that. But then, as you point out, he found a way to look around him and see all of these causes um, that needed his help. And he went out and supported them. He did big efforts things like farm aid to really, while people were looking at famine around the world, which is very important, Willie also said, hey, we have issues of, of farmers and others struggling here in the United States. Let's get together and do that. Even today, he's still advocating now for causes like uh, LGBTQ plus rights. So, you know, and then his music is amazing. You know, it's, it's one amazing song after the other. I was looking at the number of people he's collaborated with over the years. And one of the cool things working here that I got to hear in the last several months since he got nominated was how many other musicians love and respect him. And that says a lot, right? When your peers uh, come out and, and almost every musician who's come through the building since Willie's been nominated has said to me, hey man, I saw Willie Nelson's nominated this year. Awesome, amazing. He's the most deserving guy, the most amazing musician and a great person. So it's, it's been really uh, cool to have conversations about him. And um, man, you know, just celebrated his 90th birthday this right. week uh, with a big uh -huh. show out in LA. So Absolutely. And, you know, actually knock on wood with, with, with his health and all that, Jason. But, you know, when, when the voters, you know, sat down earlier this year and, and you think they kind of nominated Willie, you know, it, it, age must have played some sort of factor, right? Like, you know, he's 90 years old. He's not going to yeah. be with us forever. Like kind of let's get him, let's get him in. Yeah, and I think there's a lot of um, people who have been inducted. Look at this year, George Michael, right? Unfortunately, he passed away. So unfortunately, we don't always get that right. But in the case of someone like Willie, and I yeah. think, again, you and I talked last year when Dolly Parton was nominated, that sort of door has opened to the line between country and rock and roll. And I think Willie Nelson, in many ways, uh, is incredibly rock and roll. I mean, outlaw country. It's basically him saying we need to bring the rock and roll back into country music. Um, yeah. And he's continued to do that throughout his career. So, yeah, we're happy to celebrate him. Man, I'm excited to see him and what he's going to do in the induction ceremony in Brooklyn. I'm sure Absolutely. that's going to be awesome. 
Absolutely. You know, and something we can, you know, I, I'd like to talk to, uh, about this with you later would be, to, I, I'm, there's a pattern with Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, uh, in, you know, inductees, when you look at the plagues in Cleveland, most of them, if not all, had a sort of giving component. It's almost like people don't talk about part of rock and roll, the importance of giving, you know, and, and altruism and, and thinking yes. beyond yourself. You know, we can talk about you two with whatever, Live Aid, George Mike, yeah. so many. But what, what a big concept that is, you know? Yeah, and I think that's important, right? We're, we're Remember, when we're inducting somebody, this is not an award for one album or, you know, a phase of their career. This is for lifetime achievement. And, you know, not everybody in rock and roll behaves well, right? I mean, there's a lot of yeah. people out there uh, with bad behavior. But the great thing is when we find musicians and inductees who've made such an incredible positive impact on the world. And, you know, like you too, or Willie Nelson, use their um, stardom and their music the voice of their music to try and make change in the world and make something positive come out of it. Absolutely, Jason. Well, we don't want to keep you much longer. So let me ask you about one more. And I also want you to take care of your voice today. Drink some throat coat, Jason. Um, <laughs> I've got my, but, I've got my uh, drink right next to you. There you go. There you go, Jason. But, you know, Bernie Taupin. And yes. the, the, my, my favorite inductees are the ones that like kind of I don't know, honestly, and that I discover. Bernie Taupin basically a hugely important part of Elton John's catalog. Yes, absolutely. And in fact, th these are the ones that are on a day like today are always exciting for me because Bernie Taupin is in the uh, musical excellence category, which means he wasn't nominated. This is done by committee. And it's always so cool to see these announced on a day like today. And Bernie, I think this is a great example where there's somebody getting inducted who probably should have been here already. In many ways, if you think about Elton John, He's been in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame for years. As you mentioned, his career, the songs uh, that Elton sings, most of them co-written with Bernie Taupin. And Bernie has worked with so many different artists as a songwriter, as a lyricist. Um, his words are the ones we all sing uh, when we think of some of these incredible Elton John songs and other artists. And it's great to see him in as a songwriter in that way, to think about his skill and the craft. And, you know, Oftentimes when you get the front person like an Elton John inducted, you don't get the sort of support people who are there who help make that music what it is. Right. And that's where, um, you know, Bernie's in. And I was lucky enough to get to talk to him uh, a little bit yesterday. We, we had a quick conversation myself and Greg uh, with Bernie. And he said uh, he was just so excited to finally be in that Elton had always told him he, he, he would hoped he would get in one day because he wanted to make sure that Bernie's contributions in that career were uh, recognized just as much as Elton's. So that's a really well, Jason, cool one. You know, this one, you know, and we're so, 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 so excited. Uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I was with uh, Peter Shapiro, Pete Shapiro here, he was here yes. in Brooklyn, and we were reminiscing about, you know, all those spine tingling moments at the ceremonies. And, mm -hmm. you know, if we're lucky to, if, you know, if we're there in Brooklyn with you again this year, we can't wait to, to, to see the emotion in their families and Bernie yeah. Toppin's kids and grandkids and, and everyone, because what, what a special night, Jason Hanley. Thank you so much for your time. Jamie, always great seeing you. Thank you, man. Always great. Take care.